Hi, I'm Brandon Darty, a field applications engineer with Faro Technologies. Today, we're going to be going over a common question from customers of how to take measurements inside of Scene, our registration software. I'm going to show you three different ways to measure, a good, a better, and a best way. Right now, we are at Faro's production studio, Studio 81 in Lake Mary, Florida, and we have already captured two scans of the space, and we're going to finish up by capturing one more right over here so that we can get this side of the pillar, because I already got the other two sides. So while we start this, uh, some things to go over. I have a resolution of 1 8 as well as a quality of 3x for this scan. The reason it is a lower resolution is because we are right next to the object that we are trying to get measurements of. So I don't want to spend too much time actually getting my scans. I'm also in this scan right here, but that's not really going to matter because our object of interest is, of course, this pillar. So once this is done, I'm going to process it and register it in scene, and then I'll see you back while we're going to go over those three best measurements. And we have just transferred all of the data from the Focus Premium Scanner into our laptop, and now we are ready to get inside scene. We've already processed and registered the data as well. As you can see here, Studio 81 looking full and complete. Our three scans right here, and the pillar that we are trying to get our measurements from as well. So let's start with the good, which is going to use the measure points tool. So right up in our toolbar up here, we're going to click measure points, and we have this little ruler icon that pops up. So now we are going to just click on one side of the face, and you can see the little extension line right here. If I click anywhere else, it is going to place another point and we are wanting to get to the other side of the pillar. So what we need to do is use the control, the control tool and just make our way around. And you can see here, this is already one of the harder things to try to contain inside of the measure points where we're not exactly able to easily rotate around. So making sure that you understand this can be a little bit of a con of this tool is good to know. Now that we have the next point that we're trying to select on this part right here, I can double click and I'll hit escape and now we can just go back to where we're trying to get our measurement and you can see here we are given a overall distance a vertical distance and a horizontal. So if I right click on this and go to properties, you can see all of these distances in here. Something to note for this, we have a horizontal distance, which most people would assume is what we're trying to get out of this, but this horizontal distance is not exactly what we're wanting. That horizontal distance is both the X and the Y taken into account. So this, this measurement, once again, is a quick way of getting a measurement, but it is not the best way. So we're going to move on to our next one. I'm going to make this measurement invisible. So right there, you can see it's, it's still in our structure tree, but it is no longer visible. So now we are going to use our Mark Points and Mark Planes tool inside of our overall 3D view. So right here, I'm going to choose Mark Point. And you can see that point has also been added to our structure tree under matched objects. This structure tree is very important when we're trying to mark points and planes as it will make it easier to measure when we remember where all of these are stored. So now we are going to move to the other side. And instead of marking a point, because as we just mentioned, Marking two points can cause you not to get the actual measurement you're wanting. We're going to mark a plane. And once again, I have this little pin tool, and I'm just going to 
select once, and it's going to cover the entire pillar side face that it, it knows is in that same plane and create that plane once again in our structure tree, plane one was created. So now I'm going to hit escape to get out of that tool. And we have our point and our plane. So now we're going to select, instead of measure points, we're going to come to the drop down and hit measure objects. This once again gives us the ruler where we could, if we wanted to select the point and the plane in our 3D view. But personally, I like to uh, use my, my structure tree, point one and plane one, and just select them inside of the structure tree. And we can see here, it just gives us one distance. So that one distance is the normal distance from the point to the plane. And that is what we are wanting. So that is the better way of measuring. But there is a even better way, which is the best way of measuring inside of scene. So once again, I'm going to right click and I'm going to turn that measurement invisible. And the best way of measuring in scene is instead of doing it inside this 3D view where we might select a point that isn't actually on this surface, we might accidentally select right through this surface, we're going to use our quick views. So if I right click on pillar 001 and go to view, quick view, this allows me to see a almost pic picturesque view of where that scan location was. So from here, I can just mark a point using that same tool on this side of the face. This is very powerful as I know that I am only selecting from this scan position. That means that I won't accidentally select behind this pillar and select the, the backdrop over here. So we have selected our point, but this time that point is found in our structure tree under pillar 001 because we selected it inside of our quick view. So now we need to select on the other side of the pillar. So I'm just going to double click on pillar 003. We can see we are in this third scan and we can see this face on the other side. So we could use the mark plane tool, but because we have this thermostat here, this, this thermostat may actually take some of those points into consideration will, when building out that plane. So instead of using that, we're going to use the selection tool and select the area we want to make the plane from. I like to use the polygon tool so that I can just draw out exactly the shape I want and the points of where to use it. And when you're done, you just double click to use that area. Now I'm going to right click on that selection, go to create objects and select plane. And here you can see only using those points that are in that selection, a plane was created. And I'm going to say OK. Go to pillar 003, and we can see that plane is right there. So remember where you create your points and planes in your quick views. If you have more than three scans, it can become confusing where these points and planes are. Now we are ready to measure from object to object. So we choose measure objects. We choose point one inside of our previous quick view. And then we choose plane inside of this quick view. And we can see this measure object was created, but we don't actually see a measurement inside of this quick view. That is because we use two different quick views. If we use the same one, we would actually see the measurement in here. But to see that new measurement, we just need to go to the 3D view and we can see that new measurement. So this is the best way, once again, just because we are using only one way, one, 
we are using multiple views and we're only choosing the points and planes inside of those views so we're not selecting through what we don't want. And there you have it, the three ways to measure inside of scene, the good, the better, and the best. So now it's your turn to try it out yourself. Please let us know if you have any questions about scene or the focus premium so that we can answer them in the comments below. And happy scanning.